the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, the chairman of the Ceylon Electricity Board declares that after feasibility studies are finished in 2027, Sri Lanka will release bids for the construction of two 500 megawatt offshore wind farms off the shores of Mana and Puttalam. The Purchasing Managers Index increases from 48.6 in September to 54.3 in October, indicating a robust recovery in Sri Lanka's construction industry, according to the Central Bank. The market had a mixed trend on the week's penultimate trading day, with the ASPI continuing its rising pace in the fourth consecutive day and the S&P SL20 experiencing a notable decline. And Asian stocks experience a decline due to growing tensions in the conflict between Russia and Ukraine and reduced risk appetite. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. Ceylon Electricity Board Chairman Tilak Siembalapitiya announced that Sri Lanka plans to invite bids for the development of two 500 megawatt offshore wind plants off the coast of Mana and Puttalam following the completion of feasibility studies in 2027. This initiative is part of the country's efforts to expand its renewable energy capacity and reduce reliance on fossil fuels. Ceylon Rick City Board Chairman Tilak Siembalapitiya stated that detailed environmental studies, seafloor surveys and logistics assessments must be completed before Sri Lanka calls for bids to develop two 500 megawatt offshore wind plants. Speaking at a forum organized by Sri Lanka's Export Development Board, Siembalapitiya highlighted that the MANA site has a significantly higher energy yield compared to the Putlama site. The wind plants will be located about 100 km offshore with turbines installed on the seafloor. Power generator will be transmitted to the shore via cables without the need of an offshore grid substantial and will be connected to the national grid. In contrast, the Putlam site, situated approximately 10 km offshore, has less favorable wind conditions and the transmission cost is higher due to the need of new lines as existing capacity is already full. CMLAPT also mentioned that the third potential location for wind plants, Hambantota, was being considered but was less attractive due to lower wind potential. The two offshore wind plants are part of Sri Lanka's power generation plan and are aimed at supporting local consumption. Sri Lanka's construction sector showed a strong recovery in October with the Purchasing Managers Index rising to 54.3 up from 48.6 in September. The rebound follows the resolution of election-related uncertainties as reported by the Central Bank. Construction activity picked up momentum in October as a resolution of election-related uncertainties helped restore confidence in the sector. According to industry respondents, the new orders index continued its upward trend, reflecting a steady availability of construction projects. This resurgence in demand was further supported by an increasing interest from private investors who are drawn to favourable market conditions, especially the recent decline in construction material prices. The quantity of purchases index also turned positive in October, aligning with overall improvement in construction activity. However, despite the positive trends, firms have remained cautious in their recruitment strategies. This is evident from the ongoing decline in the employment index, suggesting that companies are hesitant to expand their workforce too quickly. Sri Lanka has been selected as one of 20 countries to establish a World Bank Group integrated office set to open in July of next year, according to an announcement made by the WBG President AJ Banga yesterday. The World Bank chief shared a news during a virtual meeting with President Anurakumar de Sanayaka and government officials to discuss Sri Lanka's future development priorities. The Presidential Media Division said the establishment of the integrated South Asia office is part of Banga's plan to improve coordination between the four key World Bank institutions, the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, the International Development Association, the International Finance Corporation and the Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency. The Sri Lanka Hotel Association recently celebrated its 59th anniversary with notable figures such as Minister Vijita Herath and Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe in attendance. Sri Lanka is making significant strides towards becoming one of the world's leading sustainable tourism destinations, according to Minister of Tourism Vijita Herath. He said this speaking at an event in Colombo yesterday. 
The minister emphasized the government's dedication to advancing the tourism sector while maintaining a strong focus on sustainability. During the event, Central Bank Governor Dr. Nandalal Vira Singh addressed the importance of both economic and political stability for the country's future growth. He noted that while Sri Lanka has faced challenges in recent years, the country has successfully established the stable political environment under current leadership, which is crucial for achieving long-term sustainable economic growth. Minister Herathe quoted these sentiments, affirming that Sri Lanka is now on the path to greater stability. He said that this progress would lead to a more resilient and prosperous economy, with tourism playing a pivotal role in the nation's recovery and a long-term economic strategy. The event underscored the significant contribution of tourism to Sri Lanka's ongoing economic revival and future prospects. The Colombo West International Terminal is set for significant development with new equipment arriving soon to boost its operational capacity at the Port of Colombo. The Colombo West International Terminal is set to enhance its operational capacity with the arrival of new state-of-the-art equipment on the 1st of December. This includes two ship-to-store cranes and three yard gantry cranes, marking a significant milestone in the terminal's ongoing development. As CWIT nears the completion of its first phase, key infrastructure achievements have been made, including the completion of the 600-meter jetty deck, which has already facilitated the arrival of equipment vessels. The MVGHT marinas can Carrying the new STS cranes and yard gantry cranes is expected to dock at CWIT on the 1st of December, further strengthening the terminal's capabilities. With the addition of these new machines, CWIT's fleet will now include four STS cranes and 11 yard gantry cranes, complementing the two STS cranes and eight CRMG cranes that are already under commission. This equipment upgrade is part of CWIT's broader development plan to increase handling capacity and support Sri Lanka's ambition to reach 15 million TEUs by 2026. Let's take a short break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. On the last trading day of the week, the market showed a mixed trend, with the S&P SO20 seeing a significant decrease and the ASPI maintaining its upward momentum for the fourth day in a row. For further insights, we speak with Manusha Kandanarachi from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. At the week ending, the Colombo Bose experienced a day of increased volatility as mixed sentiment dominated the market, continuation from the previous sessions. Amidst the decreased participation from both retail and high net worth investors, the All Share Price Index closed in the green net 13,189, gaining 25 points for the day. Meanwhile, S&P SL20 index dipped by 0.32% compared to the previous session and stood at 3,905 due to reduced activity in conglomerates and major banks. The most significant contributors Towards the positive index were Akon Spence Hotels Holding PLC, Chevron Lubricants Lanka PLC, Akon Spence, Sampath Bank, and Brown's Investments PLC. Additionally, specific stocks in the hotel and banking sector continued to attract investor interest throughout the trading day. If I talk about the turnover, amid several crossings, turnover stood at LKR 3.7 billion, marking a 3.3% decrease from the monthly average. Moreover, consumer services sector led the turnover by 24%, followed by banking and capital goods sector jointly contributing 35% of the overall turnover. The top gainers for the day were Nation Lanka Finance, Browns Beach Hotels, Royal Palms Beach Hotels, Aiken Spence Hotels Holdings and Ambient Capital. Meanwhile, top losers for the day were Blue Diamonds Non-Voting, Industrial Asphalts, Blue Diamonds Voting, Tess Agro and Vascadua Beach Resorts PLC. Throughout the week, the market fluctuated and on the last day, it shows a mixed trend. While the S&P SO20 suffered significant drops on the first and last days of the week, the ASPI continued its upward trajectory for the fourth day in a row. For further insights, we spoke with Zahima Jahan from First Capital Holdings. Uh, the Colombo Post experienced a week marked by significant volatility with the ASPI showing mix of gains and losses, ultimately ending the week on a positive note. Uh, so the index saw a decline early in the week, driven by profit-taking, 
but recovered as investor sentiment improved, uh, especially within the banking and diversified financial sectors. Uh, throughout the week, uh, the ASPI moved from 12,867 to a high of 13,189, marking a net gain of 322 points. Uh, turnover fluctuated with a noticeable drop compared to the monthly average. The highest turnover was recorded on Thursday, uh, reaching LKR 5.1 billion, largely driven by the banking sector, which uh, consistently led turnover contributions throughout the week. Uh, despite the volatility, uh, foreign investors showed a trend of net outflows across the week, signaling a cautious approach to the uh, external investments. Top contributors to the index uh, included major banking stocks like uh, Sampat, HNB, Commercial Bank and also uh, uh, John Key's Holdings, uh, with increased uh, interest seen in selected stocks from the capital goods, consumer services and materials uh, sectors. Uh, the overall market sentiment was influenced by both uh, retail and high net worth investors. However, the latter showed more prominent participation uh, fueled by the policy rate cuts and uh, shifting investor expectations. Gold prices rose today, buoyed by a dip in the dollar and escalating geopolitical tensions. However, the metal is on track for its largest monthly decline in over a year, following Donald Trump's U.S. election victory. Spot gold increased by 0.8%, reaching $2,661.14 per ounce, while U.S. gold futures also gained 0.8%, trading at $2,660.80. The rise in gold was driven by investor concerns over political uncertainty and global unrest. Despite the daily gains, gold has been under pressure this month due to shifting expectations for U.S. monetary policy. Analysts suggest that further price fluctuations are likely as market sentiment continues to react to both domestic and international developments. The strength of the dollar and broader economic indicators will remain key factors influencing the yellow metal's performance. Oil prices edged higher today, fueled by concerns over potential supply risks after Israel and Hezbollah traded accusations of ceasefire violations. And without a delay in the upcoming OPEC Plus meeting, leaving investors awaiting decisions on production policy. Brent crude futures edged 0.1% higher, settling at $73.38 per barrel, while U.S. West Texas intermediate futures rose 0.7% to $69.17 compared to Wednesday's close. On a weekly basis, however, both benchmarks posted losses. Brent was down 2.4% and WTI fell by 2.9%. Trading volumes were subdued due to the Thanksgiving holiday, which closed U.S. financial markets yesterday. The Sri Lankan rupee has strengthened further against the US dollar today compared to yesterday. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, both the buying and selling rates of the US dollar have decreased. Let's now take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is performing against other global currencies. break now this is the nightly business report welcome back Salon Bank has extended its support as the title partner for the Kadala Art of Living 2024 for the 12th consecutive year. Organized by Asia Exhibition and Conventions Limited, the Expo has been Sri Lanka's premier lifestyle event for 18 years. The Kadala Art of Living 2024 Expo, Sri Lanka's premier lifestyle exhibition, will be held at the BMICH from today onwards until the 1st of December. The event will provide visitors with a unique opportunity to explore a wide variety of products, services and materials for construction, home improvement and interior design projects. Ceylon Bank, as a title partner for the 12th consecutive year, will have a dedicated space at the Expo to offer personalized banking support. 
Visitors can learn about the bank's range of services, including housing and personal loans, leasing facilities, credit cards, saving accounts, solar loans, and digital banking solutions. The bank's presence underscores its commitment to providing simplified solutions and exceptional customer service. The Cathedral Art of Living 2024 Expo will feature over 200 trade stalls, bringing together housing and real estate professionals. The stalls will showcase a wide array of household appliances, decorative materials, landscaping options, furniture, kitchenware, tiles, granite, and bathroom fittings, offering customers plenty of choices for their home and construction projects. NDV recently celebrated the exceptional achievements of its Candy City Centre branch at the CEO's club celebration, recognising it as the best performer in the central region and the second highest performer in the NDV network. As the only super great branch outside Colombo, the KCC branch has set new benchmarks in banking excellence through its customer-focused approach and dedication. The event also highlighted the success of NDB's long-standing partnership with AIA Insurance, with bank assurance becoming a key part of its financial services. With 210 members in the CEO's club in 2023, NDB continues to expand its insurance offerings. Under the leadership of Dinupa de Silva, the KCC branch remains a key driver of innovation and customer satisfaction at NDB. MAS has partnered with the United Nations Population Fund through a year-long collaboration to promote women's health and reproductive well-being. MAS has signed a memorandum of understanding with the United Nations Population Fund, solidifying their shared vision to increase investment in women's health and well-being. The partnership aims to empower women and girls in the apparel sector, encouraging them to speak up and ensuring corporations create safe, supportive spaces for them. As part of the collaboration, MAS and UNFPA will work together to improve medical centres, conduct awareness programmes and establish wellness facilities in the BOI zones for apparel sector employees. This initiative aligns with MAS Plan for Change, which focuses on driving sustainable transformation within the business and its broader stakeholder network. Guided by the principles of United Nations Global Compact, MAS is committed to changing lives for good, with central focus on empowering women as a key pillar of its strategy. Virtuoso recently released its 2025 Lux Report, based on a survey of over 2,200 respected travel advisors from 58 countries, including 200 top Canadian advisors. The findings highlight the growing impact of weather on traveller preferences, with 44% of Canadian advisors reporting that their clients are adjusting their plans to counter the effects of climate change. Notably, 80% of advisors say clients are seeking destinations with moderate less extreme weather and 74% indicate a preference for off-peak travel times when temperatures are milder. Sustainability is becoming increasingly important in travel decisions with 26% of advisors noting that clients are actively reducing their carbon footprint by supporting carbon offsetting initiatives. According to Virtuoso's 2024 brand and travel tracker study, a survey of travelers across 17 countries, Canadian travelers prioritize weather and climate destination safety and ease of travel when planning. BLS International, a global leader in visa processing and consular services, has announced the launch of the Spain visa operations in Sri Lanka, expanding its footprint in the country. BLS International has reached a significant milestone with the opening of its Spain Visa Application Centre in Colombo, marking a key step in the company's ongoing commitment to improving the customer experience and simplifying the visa application process for Sri Lankan residents. Strategically located, the new centre aims to meet the growing demand for Spain visa applications, offering a range of services to cater to diverse traveller needs. It will not only serve applicants from Colombo but also extend its services to the Maldives, further expanding BLS International's footprint and influence in Sri Lanka and the surrounding region. This development highlights BLS International's dedication to streamlining visa services, making it easier and more accessible for individuals to plan their travels to Spain. Let's take a short commercial break now. Global business updates coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back. 
to the nightly business report. Most Asian stocks fell today, weighed down by escalating tensions in the Russia-Ukraine war, which dampened risk appetite. Japan's Nikkei 225 dropped 0.5% as the yen surged following stronger-than-expected inflation data from Tokyo. The yen hit its highest level against the dollar in over a month, contributing to the decline. The topics index also fell 0.3%. In other markets, Thailand's SET index dropped 0.2% and Indonesia's Jakarta Composite Index fell 0.8%. However, India's Nifty 50 posted a slight gain in early trade, with the U.S. Thanksgiving holiday leaving Asian markets with few overnight queues. U.S. index futures edged higher during Asia hours. Shares of Dell and HP fell after the personal computer makers issued forecasts that cast doubt on a market recovery driven by artificial intelligence-enabled PCs. Shares of Dell and HP each sank about 13 percent on Wednesday after both companies issued downbeat outlooks that cast doubt on an AI-driven market recovery for PCs. Consumers have been slow to upgrade their personal computers, as some wait for those with artificial intelligence capabilities. But one analyst told the forecast suggested AI-powered computers may not, quote, lead to any structural change in demand for PCs. Dell and HP said a slower-than-expected software upgrade from Microsoft's Windows 10 to Windows 11 likely prevented some consumers from trading up their PCs. Meanwhile, some analysts are concerned that a delayed rollout of NVIDIA's latest AI chip, due to a design flaw, could squeeze sales and profit at Dell. But there was one bright spot for Dell on the AI front. Revenue from its AI server business jumped 58 percent, thanks to robust demand from cloud companies. The U.S. Federal Trade Commission has opened a broad antitrust investigation into Microsoft examining the company's software licensing practices and cloud computing businesses, according to a source familiar with the matter. U.S. regulators have opened an antitrust investigation into Microsoft. A source told Wednesday the U.S. Federal Trade Commission will look at its software licensing and cloud computing businesses. The probe was approved by FTC Chair Lena Khan ahead of her likely departure in January. However, the election of Donald Trump as US President leaves the outcome of the investigation up in the air. He is expected to appoint a fellow Republican with a softer approach towards business. Sources confirm the FTC is examining allegations the software giant is potentially abusing its market power in productivity software. That's by imposing punitive licensing terms to prevent customers from moving their data from its Azure cloud service to other competitive platforms. The source added the FTC is also looking at practices related to cybersecurity and AI products. Microsoft declined to comment on Wednesday. Competitors have criticised Microsoft's practices they say keep customers locked into its Azure cloud offering. NetChoice is a lobbying group that represents online companies including Amazon and Google which compete with Microsoft in cloud computing. They have criticised Microsoft's licensing policies and its integration of AI tools into its office and Outlook. Google in September complained to the European Commission about Microsoft's practices. It argued it made customers pay a 400% markup to keep running Windows Server on rival cloud computing operators. Bloomberg said the FTC has demanded a broad range of detailed information from Microsoft. US antitrust regulators have been on a recent campaign against allegedly anti-competitive practices at big tech companies. Facebook owner Meta, Apple and Amazon have all been accused by the US of unlawfully maintaining monopolies. Alphabet's Google faces two lawsuits, including one where a judge found it unlawfully hurt competition among online search engines. It's unclear whether Trump will ease up on big tech, although his first administration launched several probes. Well, that's all we have on the Nightly Business Report for you tonight. We'll see you again on Monday with the latest updates across the business globe. Until then, I'm Anradhi Vikramasinghe. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great weekend.